Hey everyone, Project SPC. Today I want to show you how to make your own DIY 18650 battery pack for the Latte Panda Alpha. But before I get into that, I want to talk about what I've been doing the past few weeks. I haven't posted any videos recently because I've been hard at work on my next project. I don't want to release too many details yet. I would like a more finished product before I unveil it. But I wanted to let you know that I haven't forgotten about my Nintendo Switch or GPU project. That really was the segue into what I'm making now, and those will be brought back. Um, what I'm about to release, I don't think I've ever seen before in a product, so please stay tuned. So let's go over the battery pack. First off, it's a 2S battery pack that the Latte Panda Alpha requires when you use the 10-pin battery connector. It means you need two of these in series to get the required voltage. One of the good things though is that it should be scalable. If you make another identical pack, you should be able to chain that into the positive and negative leads from the positive and negative terminals to create effectively double capacity battery pack. And that's going to come at the cost of charging speed. Another thing that I'm going to warn you about is the battery level. When you use a battery pack like this, it's not the same as a laptop, which has a finely tuned battery pack and an I2C connection to provide feedback to the computer about the battery level. It is not going to be that accurate. It will take a few cycles of fully charging the battery and discharging it in Windows for Windows to get a good idea of what the battery is like, but it isn't going to be perfect. And there's a couple other quirks that we're going to need to go over along the way. So let's go over the parts that I use to create this. And I will leave links in the description below for everything that I can. The battery I chose is a Samsung 30Q, 3000 milliamp hour, lithium ion batteries. I chose this because this has a fast charge feature of up to four amps. I read somewhere that the Latte Panda Alpha's charging circuit has a high constant current, constant voltage rating. So to make sure there isn't any fire risk for charging the batteries, I chose this battery here. Low grade LiPo batteries or batteries from a not reputable seller might be an issue with the Latte Panda Alpha, so please make sure you buy a good battery. For battery holders, I've got this one here. I bought this on Amazon. I didn't want to worry about soldering to the batteries or spot welding, which are options for 18650 batteries. But I wanted a reliable mechanical connection, so this battery pack delivers. It's got a very nice terminal here, and it has uh, a fairly wide surface area. So I feel this is confident um, to use with this project. We have the battery managed circuit for the um, 2S combination. You can buy five of these on Amazon for about 10 bucks. We've got 20 gauge wire. This may be overkill for the project because 20 gauge wire is rated for, I think, 11 amps. The max we'll probably see on this is three amps, but I'd rather be safe than sorry when dealing with 18650 batteries. There's a 10K ohm thermistor up here, negative thermal coefficient thermistor that's going to get soldered between the blue and the black wires. So that's one of the other things you're going to need to get. And they're pretty cheap on Amazon or eBay, um, especially eBay if you don't mind waiting. And the unique component here is the panel mate Molex connector here on top. It's 10 pins, pitch of 1.25 millimeters, and you can't buy a connector outright. Um, there are some places that do sell the components to make this, like DigiKey, but you can't buy this connector with the wires outright. Um, I may end up buying some of these if people are interested to make some. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't make this. I actually stole it from another battery pack. Um, but if people are interested, leave a comment below. And so those are the components that go into this battery pack. So let's go over how to wire this up. So the way that this works is you've got these two batteries in series. 
So somewhere you're going to have a middle point, which the PCB requires that you make a connection to. So for this battery pack, I've got my middle point up here, and I've soldered a jumper wire from one end of the terminal to the other. And from this terminal, I've got that routed down to the PCB's BM point battery middle point. On the other end, we've got the positive and negative terminals for our 2S pack. So there I've soldered the wire and run that to the corresponding PCB contactor points. Lastly, we've got the charging lead, positive and negatives. That's for the input and output of the battery pack. And they're going to be soldered to P plus and P minus. So when you go ahead and you make these solder connections, first off, don't have the batteries in. You do not want to put excess heat into these batteries because you either risk damaging them or they could catch fire. So please be careful. When you're soldering on the PCB, please take care that you don't damage any of the components by leaving your soldering iron tool on too long or accidentally contacting one of these. And you don't want to put too much heat in here where you could also lift these components off. Once that's all done, you're going to route them up to your panel mate connector here, and they're going to join those wires together. And lastly, and it's difficult to see because I do have it wrapped in tape, this blue wire ties to the thermistor, which then ties to the ground wires. Once you've got everything soldered together and you've tested it, it's time to install the batteries. When I installed these batteries, I found my positive lead here, and I inserted my battery, which is the positive terminal here, into that spot. I found my negative terminal, and I made sure that the second battery went in negative side first. It's also a good idea to check your batteries for the voltage to make sure you know which way is positive and negative, and to make sure that it isn't a bad battery. Once you've got all your solder connections made, test them. Pull on them, make sure that they aren't going to come apart. So do some pull tests and make sure all your connections are good. Before you install the batteries, you're also going to want to take your multimeter and you're going to want to check for continuity between the midpoint terminals here and the PCB. You're going to want to check continuity between the negative um, terminal here and here and the positive here and here to make sure that you have a good connection. And lastly, but most importantly, you wanna to check to see if you made any shorts. So you're gonna check the resistance or the isolation between the positive and negative leads here and the positive and negative leads here. Make sure that there's a large resistance greater than five mega ohms between these two contactors. So now that you've got your battery pack installed and it is charging, you're going to want to uh, monitor it for heat. You can also keep track of the battery progress by using a multimeter and use your DC voltage um, with the 10 mega ohm resistor to measure the voltage across the battery pack. So I'm at 4.15 volts right now. So you can monitor that and, and you can tell when the battery packs are full. Since these battery packs are basically full, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the cable out to show you that it does indeed work. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when you shut it down and boot it from a battery pack. So once the um, computer shuts down, you're going to see the blue light and then the red light disappear. Since the voltage on this battery pack isn't high enough to trigger this little red light, you're never going to see it when you're booting just from the battery pack. You still can. If you go ahead and you hold the power button, you're going to see the red light come back on. And now we're back in. So this concludes my DIY 18650 battery pack. If you have any questions please leave those in the comments below if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button if you want to see my latest project that will be releasing very shortly please hit subscribe and thank you for watching